Hi, I'm Jeff Farnwald, Director of the MBA program at Rockford College. About 18 months ago, the Rockford Chamber of Commerce set out to make networking easier in Rockford by identifying area people you should know in business. Currently, 41 people have been recognized and celebrated as one of these people. This series of talks held at Rockford College was designed to provide a vehicle for the public to hear from and learn about each of the people you should know. I hope you enjoy this talk. And welcome to Rockford College for our People You Should Know Talks. Today we have Kathy Weber, um, the Managing Director at BMO Privis, Private Bank. Um, Kathy is a 2011 you should, People You Should Know Award recipient. Um, at BMO Private Bank, she oversees a professional wealth services team. She serves on many community boards, including the Rockford Memorial Development Foundation and the Rockford Park District Foundation. Her talk today is Building Your Own Brand Awareness, and please help me in welcoming Kathy Weber. Hi. Thank you, Lauren, and thank you, Rockford College, for offering us this chance to get out and speak to different people in the community. It's nice to see a good turnout. Um, I was told by my son this weekend that it was spring break, and mom, you're not going to have anybody show up out there, so <laughs> I'm excited, a good turnout, so thank you. So yeah, that was kind of the joke around our house this weekend. So thank you very much. Um, as Lorna said, I am the managing director for BMO Private Bank. I've uh, been um, in this community my entire life. I have four children, four boys, a daughter-in-law and a new grandson who's six months old. Um, we think we set a record here last year at Rockford College. We had four Webbers attending at the same time. <laughs> So Dr. Head teases me that I paid a salary, so, <laughs> but, uh, so that is exciting. It's fun uh, to be able to come out here and speak. I was in class here last night myself till 10.15, so I was ready to just bring out my sleeping bag and spend the night, but, uh, you know, had to get a little bit cleaned up for the occasion. Uh, so my, uh, my title at BMO is the Managing Director, but really I look at myself as being a community, in, very involved in the community, an advisor, and also what, I do in vo what motivates me is being able to connect people with each other. And, and it really is fun seeing this crowd here. I, I have colleagues that I've worked with in the past and colleagues that are on boards with me and students that I've had classes with. So it's a lot of fun uh, to have this group together. Now if I can get technology. There we go. Just a little bit about the organization that I work for, uh, BMO Private Bank. We, are, we were founded in 1817. Um, our parent company is through the Bank of Montreal. Um, we have more than 47,000 employees, 14 branches in the Rockford community. And um, last year we uh, had merged with M&I Bank, so you'll see our distribution has really spread across the nation. So, no, we're not going to talk about the cow branding. <laughs> That's the first thing you think of. So branding. Brand is, is, like I said, most people think of branding as um, differentiating one's personal cattle from one to the other. That's where branding originally started. We also think of brands as symbols, you know, what differentiate. When you see these symbols, we all recognize the different brands, what they stand for. So everybody knows these symbols, but what the buzzword now is branding your own personal identity and who you are and building your own personal reputation. And one thing I really wanted to touch on, while, while the branding of your own reputation is very important, is with the new social media today, you, you, many of your employers are already Googling you before they hire you. So it's important that you're very strict on what you're putting onto Facebook or any of the other uh, media sites. So I think that is something that's a growing concern. And I know it's a big talk of whether um, you know, employers can get into your Facebook and get your password and things like that. So be, you know, I just can only stress, um, and it stays out there forever. I mean, that's one thing I counsel as a parent and, and as a, uh, a manager, that something you put on Facebook, you know, five years ago um, is still there. So be very careful of what might hit your Facebook account. So the first step in building your own personal brand awareness is really to develop your own a personal emotional appeal. So what do you enjoy doing? What do you like doing? Um, you think of things that, you know, how, how do I make people feel? And how do people feel when they're around me? And this is where you want to start uh, drawing on your personal strengths. 
And then, you know, you, then you move into, um, you know, to determine your description is what do you do? What do you do in your profession? What do you do in your personal life? And how do you have those conversations to build that relationship? And then the next step is once you start developing your own ma mantra, you'd say, is that you want to um, start cultivating your centers of influence. And we kind of use that buzzword a lot, but really developing centers of influence is really building relationships. It's like you build a relationship with a friend, you're going to also build that relationship with another uh, professional or another colleague at work. So it's important that um, just be yourself. Be authentic. I think that's the, the one thing is people try to be somebody different and then uh, your uh, relationships will see through that. So be yourself. Um, get involved. Get involved with uh, the community, nonprofits, with schools, with your churches, with people at work. That's how you're going to end up meeting new people and getting connected. Um, I think it's really important in today's environment with different uh, work structures that we get to know many different people in our community because we all need to rely on each other and partner together and learn from each other. Um, once you do get involved and you're getting connected, the important thing is when you're meeting people is follow up with them, stay in touch. You know, one and done is not going to work. You really need to, you know, meet with these people over and over again. Um, not just, you know, met you at the chamber event and you don't see each other for another year at the next chamber event, but really you want to, you know, follow up with them in the next month or so, invite them to lunch, get to know them, and build a relationship. And that's really where you're going to really learn from each other. I mean, Einer, how many people do we have attending the annual dinners? 750. 750 people, which means 750 opportunities. But that's only if you're utilizing it if you're really taking advantage of being in a room with that many people. Sometimes we come to those events and we kind of stick to our own crowd. You know, oh, I'm very familiar with my people. And really, what I try to do is make kind of a, a challenge, a personal challenge. I'm going to come to this event, and I'm going to reach out, and I'm going to try to meet five new people. And then you really have a chance to spend, which mingling usually at these events and different things are about a half an hour. Uh, maybe even afterwards, but, you know, you, and you got to keep moving because you know how you can get trapped with one person, <laughs> you know, and you're like, okay, how do I get out of this situation, you know? <laughs> you're nice to know, but not that nice to know. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, you know, really think of it as a, as a challenge that, you know, I'm going to get five new business cards or, or even target, boy, there's five people in this community that I'd really like to get to know. And then you make it a mission for yourself to get to their table or get to, you know, that side of the room which is very crowded, right, Einer? I don't know if we can get it much crowded at Giovanni. So, um, so it is a task. It's hard. Sometimes you have to do a little block and tackling, you know, but um, it can be done. Um, and then I say connect within people within your own organization. You know, there's a lot we can learn from each other just within our own company. You know, maybe you want to do something different. Maybe you've been, you know, in this uh, environment and now you decided, let's say, I want to go get into human resources and you've been in sales in the past or something. So it helps you really look and see what's available in your own company. And again, I can't stress enough about the community events. Good plug for the chamber, right, Einer? Um, Keep it up. There you go. Uh, but they, they are a lot of fun. And honestly, I think with the people that I've seen in this room, you meet people. Tracy, I know you've met a lot of people through the chamber and Gina and um, Jeff and different people. So it's really valuable. Bob Trojan is, is very visible in the community and very supportive. So. Um, Jim Keeling is uh, around, around town quite a bit, and so um, it's, it's, but that's how, you know, when I look around this room, how did I meet most of these people? Probably these chamber events. So I'd say they're very, um, they're good events to attend, and also nonprofit uh, uh, sponsored events. You know, we all have our passions, and, and so it's a good chance to get out and meet people, and also to be able to contribute to your organizations. Um, then, you know, uh, the other thing I say is ask for introductions. Don't be afraid to say, if you see somebody talking to somebody and you're like, wow, i really like to know that person, kind of come around them later and say, you know, do you think you could take the opportunity to introduce me to so-and-so? Uh, I think we'd have some connections and be able to help each other. Have your elevator speech. We all hear that buzzword. It's what you're going to say on the elevator in 30 seconds when the CEO of the company is with you. So have that ready. Know what you're going to say. And, and be authentic about it. Don't... You know, just kind of, that's what I was supposed to say. Say what you would really say. So I say, you know, have the elevator speech ready. And I'm going to say this over and over again. 
but be passionate about what you're doing. People can tell if you're passionate about what you're doing, but don't go over the top. Then you're going to, you know, then you're not, again, you're not authentic. So um, I think we all can be, can do what we're doing if we're passionate about it. Again, I, you're, like I said, be yourself. Um, I, I went to, I've gone to a lot of different sales conferences and leadership um, seminars, and one of the um, individuals that I had the uh, privilege of meeting was uh, Marcus Buckingham. And he wrote Stand Out and then also Now Discover Your Strengths. I would recommend these two books. And the first thing that Marcus Buckingham did when he um, brought this book out was his first words was to be authentic. And, I, and that hit me. It's like every other seminar I've gone to, they try to change you. You need to do this. You need to do these 10 things and you're going to be successful. So I'm trying to say, you know, here are some ideas. Tweak them to what you want to tweak them to. But really, if you're yourself, that's what's going to build the relationship. And then, you know, again, getting involved is just going to open doors for you. And I'm going to switch gears a little bit. And some of this might be repetitive, but as a hiring manager um, and as a mom, First impressions count. They matter. Um, I can tell you if I'm hiring somebody and I walk around the corner and they're not dressed for a wealth management position, it's not going to happen. <laughs> so that was a quick interview, you know. And, and it's sad. But, you know, this is stuff that I see over and over again. Even people coming in just to, you know, they might be coming in to get an application and they think they're not going to run into somebody. You don't know who you're going to run into. But that was something that was trained very early on in my life, back in high school, that you, you need to dress appropriately for the position that you want. Um, and first impressions do matter. They're the image. They're what people think about when they think of you. So your wardrobe is important. Um, your personal style. Are you over the edge? Are you over the top? Are you trendy? So those, those do make a difference. And dress for the role that you want, not the one that you currently have. Look for your mentor. Is that's what you want to be, then you're going to follow that lead. So, obviously, the nose. It'd be fun, though. Get to wear flip flops. I'd, I'd enjoy that. Don't think it would cut it, but so the nose. And you hate to say, like I said, some of this might sound redundant, but one thing I find, too, is that you, know, you need to take a look at yourself in the mirror. Is, is this, is this a appropriate dress? Is it, it, it sounds fundamental, but I, you have no idea how many times I've had to say, press the khakis, <laughs> you know, press that shirt. You know, okay, it's a golf event, but do you, you know, are you still too casual at it? So I do think it's something that we can't, you know, can't overstress is about your appearance. Um, a couple things is, like I said, dress conservatively. Know if you're a little bit over the top. Is this kind of a going out? with the ladies after work or, you know, is this something that you'd really wear to the office? Um, and then when you're looking for a job, also if you're curious about the dress code, call the HR department ahead of time. Ask them what's the dress code for the position. Then you're going in prepared. Uh, little things, minimize the jewelry and accessories, and don't forget the details. This is another thing. Um, it was a seminar I had very beginning of my banking career. A lady came in and spoke about dress. and. Um, it talked about pay attention to your shoes. Is the, are the, is the mud off your shoes, you know? Um, are your uh, nails look appropriate? You know, it's a little detail. And they told it, the lady told a story how a woman went in to apply for, went in for a job interview and she forgot to paint her um, pinky. And they said, oh, okay, well, she didn't paint her pinky finger, but the rest were painted. So they said, well, we're going to give her a second chance. She came back and it still wasn't painted. So they said she, there was no attention to detail. You know, they said the first time it could have been I just kind of forgot, ran late, but the second time to do it twice didn't get the job. So, I mean, it sounds crazy, but, you know, it, think about it. It does matter. Again, overdress rather than underdress, conceal tattoos or excess piercings. It seems crazy that we have to say those things, but we do. And, and there's places I know that many of us, if you have a tattoo, you're not allowed to have it shown, you know, and it could be a social event for the company because you're representing the company also. Besides branding your own reputation, you still are on company time. And uh, so here's the appropriate dress attire. And in a typical professional environment, there is different environments for, you know, like I said, your industry. Um, so the next step is now you've cultivated some networks, you're dressing the part. Um, so what you want to do, what I'm saying here is 
this is things that things that you're going to look at for self-promotion. Um, when you're in the company, it's not good enough anymore just to be working hard. You have to let people know what you're doing. You, you know, you, we all thought if we work hard, we're going to get promoted. I see some giggles back there. So, touched on a few hearts. <laughs> But you know, you, you really do have to, you have to brand yourself within your own company. You can't take it for granted that somebody else is noticing what you do. So take the ch chance to talk about your results if you've just done a major project and you've had good success rate. Um, uh, you can also, sometimes there's company newsletters and you can write an article and have it go in the, the company newsletter. Um, be an uh, industry expert, speak at events, you know, uh, <laughs> volunteer. <laughs> so get asked to do it. <laughs> but, it gives you an opportunity to practice, you know, practice talking in front of people. So, um, and then again, build your own custom network, and that is really targeting who can help you with your career path. And I just kind of like this slogan all at once. The brand is you. You're your own destiny. You're your own reputation. You set your own image. You're in control of where you want to be. So when you align with who you are, and with what you do, you'll attract the opportunities you wish for, and you'll be remembered long past the first impression you make. And just to summarize, be authentic. Again, be yourself. I never hide the fact that I'm a mother of four boys, and I have to run out and do Halloween parties sometimes on my lunch hour, or you know, go, get to a baseball game or basketball game. And um, I know in the past, women especially felt that they could not say they were a mom at work. And you know what, that's just, that's just over with. But if we say who we are, and then you actually get more respect that way. You know? So um, I just can't stress enough, be who you are. And do something that you love doing. It's going to show. It's going to show if you like doing what you're doing and your passion and commitment. Know it well, believe in it, and give it your all. And then, you can tell I'm a proud grandma. Oh. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, he got some brownie points on that one. So, thank you. Any questions?